So here I am, I'm about to go through a little black steel door to go minister to um, prostitutes, people who've been sex trafficked, people who've sex trafficked other people, uh, murderers, drug traffickers, people who need help. But if nobody cares about them and gives them a chance at life, why would God give us a chance at life? So today, we're gonna go through this little door and we're gonna give up ourselves to people who maybe we might not think deserve it, but who says that we deserve it? Let's go change some lives. Sometimes what seems like the end is really the beginning. I'm gonna take you behind the curtain of my life and my friends are gonna tell their stories too. I thought my life was over when I got molested as a child. Then I got pregnant at 17 and my drug addict ex-husband held a gun to my head but only God could give me the life that I have today. And you can have that too. We're going from the pain to the promise in a real, raw, and organic way. Are you ready? Let's go. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows Jesus. Help! <laughs> Somebody help me! I am stuck here and there is nobody to help. You know, that's a really kind of a humorous take about how a lot of people feel when they're in prison. Like you watch the movies, you watch certain shows, of, oh brother, where art thou? And you got the prisoners and it's a big cut up, but nothing about being locked up is funny. Nothing about being locked up is a cut up. You're stuck for something that you've done or maybe even something you didn't even do. And a lot of times we aren't in a physical prison, but a lot of us are in a mental prison, a prison of our own judgment, an emotional prison. Well, today I'm gonna to take you into some actual prisons. I got to go into the prisons in Cartagena, Colombia and minister to, get this, one lady was hugging me, she was crying, God was moving in her life, she was sharing with me and I held her arms and I held her in my arms while she had a radical life change. And after we left the prison, they said, you know that one woman that was hugging you and, and, and abrazos, she was hugging you. And yes, 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 she said, they said, she's a serial murderer. I was like, hey, you guys got a girl heads up. I mean, I need to be looking for a shank, save my life. I mean, tell me what's going on. But in reality, that's exactly who Jesus died for. He died for the outcast, the broken, the downtrodden, those in need of a savior, those who have done things to people and those who things have been done to them. Matter of fact, he said in Matthew 25, verse 40, he said, truly I say unto you, whoever has done unto the least of these in the prisons, they've done it unto me. When you minister to someone in prison, when you take time out to love someone in prison, when you take time out to help somebody in prison, Jesus says, you're doing it to me. So I want you to come with me to the prisons of Cartagena, Colombia. My friend, Pastor Miguel Arizola, he does it all the time. And he's gonna go with us. He's gonna tell us about the prisons, what happens there, and how we can help people get out of prison. And when we do that, it's like doing it to Jesus himself. Let's go to prison. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody but Jesus. My kids said that I'm, I'm passionate, um, that uh, I'm strong, and I feel that I'm, I'm a loving guy. I want to be a fire uh, fighter, and the end of the year, then the other the half of the year, I want to be Superman. Yes, I love that. Comics, yeah. <laughs> I'm an eye and a half, but my wife said 6'3", so <laughs> let's do that, yeah.
Welcome to my living room. Here we are in West Palm Beach, and today we're going to talk to a friend of mine about being in prison. Not that he was ever in prison, because <laughs> were you in prison? They didn't. They, Thank God, no. They didn't catch you yet. No. No. Okay. I, they didn't I, catch I, him I, yet. <laughs> uh, he is from the country of Colombia. And we've done some work in the prisons of Colombia. We're going back to do work in the prisons of Colombia. Yes. And here's the amazing thing. In the darkest hour, God met Paul and Silas in the prison and let them out. So I don't know what you're dealing with today. If you're in a prison of depression, prison of anxiety, you're in a financial prison, like locked in, don't know which way to go. I do know this. There is hope. And that's what we want to, we're going to bring people hope today. Um, and so this is my friend, Miguel, and Miguel Arizola. Did I say your last name right? Yeah, this, that's, that's good. That's good for a gringa. <laughs> that means I didn't say How do you, okay, how do you say your name appropriately in Spanish? Arrasola. Arra. It, it's, even, even, it's even hard for Spanish people to do that because it's a weird last name. So you're, you're doing okay. I feel better about this right now. <laughs> So you and I, you and I met through through friends of friends of friends, and I got to Colombia, and you guys have built something amazing in Colombia. But I just want to start with what you guys have done there. You guys have a, a, a church that you've built. Well, we live in Cartagena. Cartagena is a beautiful city by the Caribbean Sea. You you you've been there, beautiful sea, sea, sea the shoreline, the beaches, and. Uh, it's just amazing, amazing city, very historical. So it's very tourist uh, place to be. It's uh, where uh, Michael Douglas filmed way back in the days, the Romancing Stone oh, movie. Oh, yeah, I remember that movie. Wait yeah. a minute, I don't know if I should have meant that. <laughs> <laughs> so God sent us out there and we started a church uh, 24 years ago. Wow. Yeah, that's a long time. You're not huh? old enough to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Cartagena, besides being a very beautiful city, is the second poorest city in Colombia. Which is hard to believe when you go there and you see how gorgeous it is. Exactly. Uh, because sometimes um, it's a culture of things, it's a background of things, and we have been dealing with poverty for so many, so many years now. and. Yeah. We live only for the tourism. Mm -hmm. The city uh, gain uh, profit from the tourism. And sometimes you don't have any, many tourists. And most of the profit go to other cities, not our city. So gotcha. the money doesn't stay there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things about the trip to Colombia, and I didn't even really know that we were doing this ahead of time, and I didn't know it was going to impact me the way that it did. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to tear up already. Was going into the prison. How did you guys get involved into going into the prisons in Colombia? And like, who, who are in, in a lot of the people in the prisons in Colombia? Uh, we started getting involved in the prison for quite some time. I gave 12 to 13 years. My wife and I have the, the feeling that we have, it was our time to, to help those people. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the prison were in downtown, in the city wall where all the tourists, you know, go by every day. So it wasn't like a real far away place. So we, f we felt that this is an, a good opportunity to, to do so. And you know, prison in, in Colombia are very, very ugly. Mm -hmm. They're not uh, very well. The facilities are very, uh, uh, not in, in a good shape. Mm -hmm. And my wife started doing women pri prison every Thursday mm -hmm. morning. All the women go there. And the first time we got there, uh, we saw the facilities and my wife decided to really uh, build a good sanctuary for them. Mm. And so next day we start painting, we start, you know, arranging things. We got putting new bathrooms and and in that way they saw that we really yeah. did with love, you know, yeah. and compassion. But this is a sad place because um, there's three uh, uh, category of people who go to prison, to women prison in Colombia. Murders, mm. uh, child uh, trafficking, uh, uh, people who are involved in child, tra in child trafficking, and drug dealers. Mm. So that's the three main categories. So you have killers, you have people who tra traffic with uh, drugs, and who traffic with children. So people who are actually trafficking kids. Yeah. Ooh. Cartagena is beautiful, like I said a little while ago, 
but have a deep, dark secret, which is child pornography and child trafficking. It's very bad. Because just, prostitution is legal. Yeah, many people don't know that. The business of prostitution, it is. Yeah. But the actual prostitution act is not. Mm -hmm. if, if you benefit from another people, mm -hmm. uh, if you use people to, to, per, to prostitution and you gain mm -hmm. benefit, money benefits for, for them, yes, it's illegal. Okay. And because of that, child trafficking exactly. has become a big thing. Because, you know, uh, the world's getting dark, darker mm -hmm. and people are, are asking for more young girls yeah. and then childs and I don't know if you want me to, to share that, but uh, you can see in some internet site that they advertise the virginity of a lady, 13 years old lady for $500 in Cartagena, so I'm so sorry. So some, some tourists come for that yeah, reason. exactly for that. So some of the people in these jails, they're like, they're kind of hardcore, like concrete heart, like hard hearts. Oh yeah. So Ooh. me and Myra, ah, we're in the car and we are headed to the hmm. women's prison. Yeah. So the women in this prison, some of them are violent. Some of them have been drug traffickers. Some of them were drug trafficking because that's their lifestyle. Some of them were drug trafficking because they were desperate and they needed a way to eat. And then there's somebody else in this prison right now who's in there unjustly. They were just telling us about the government did not want them in power in their country because they were causing too much good change. So they got rid of them. There are different kinds of prisons. So today we're going into the prison. We can't get them out of the bars. This isn't the prison outside the window right now, but we can't get them out of the bars that they're in. But there's more than one kind of bar. There are the bars holding them in physically. There are the bars holding them in mentally. There are the bars holding them emotionally. And there are the bars holding them spiritually. So today we're gonna go bring them spiritual freedom. We're going to go preach liberty to the captives. <laughs> We're going to go preach sight to the blind. We're going to go preach hope to the hopeless and let them know God has got a plan for them, even where they're at. God had a plan for Joseph where he was at. And you never know what God can do with you, no matter where you are. So I am here with Pastor Miguel, and first of all, I just want to say thanks for inviting me. Well, thank you for coming. Um, I was—I don't think I was ready for like how open they were going to be because it's been a long time since you've been able to get in the jail with COVID. Can you tell me about that for a second? Yeah, uh, we've been here for about six years, coming every Thursday. But since COVID, the pandemic, we haven't been here for two and a half years, close mm -hmm. to that. But today was the, the first, one of the first meetings. And God was in the place. <laughs> they were open. I mean, they look like a regular service or church. Yeah. And you did an awesome message. Say thank you for the bottom of my heart, uh, for sharing your, your heart with them, your testimony. Tears was everywhere. Yeah. Even yeah. even myself, I was crying, but oh I, I I couldn't. I have to stop crying because I have to translate you. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you you can see in the face, the face just changed. Mm -hmm. The face, the heart, they just different woman. They mm -hmm. just want another chance to go out and prove themselves and prove the society that they can be different. What 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 amazing! I don't I don't have any word in English to express yeah. how much I enjoy this time and this 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 uh, little girls. You change their life. God changed their life. So right now we're in our car. Um, we just left the women's prison here in Cartagena, Colombia. And let me just tell you, the presence of God moved whew, beyond like words. I was just bawling my eyes out. Um, it was hard for me whew, just to see these ladies in captivity, but you could see just like a little shimmer in their eye of hope. Yeah. It was it was something else. You could see these women's lives changing right before mm -hmm. our eyes. If if we get books into these ladies' hands, the world is uh, there's just endless possibilities that could happen there. You know, Pastor Nicole wrote the book Hola Dios, 
um, soy yo otra vez. And it's just such an easy way to communicate with God. Because sometimes we can feel like, I don't know what to say to God. I don't know what to pray to Him. But Pastor Nicole, God was able to put that that dream into her heart. And that dream can, became a reality. And we got the book translated. So if we get these books to these ladies, it's just going to continue to help them in their journey of, of being followers of Christ, of being redeemed. Um, they don't have a lot of things to do in prison because they're in prison, but reading is one of them. So what better way than to give a gift that gives back by providing these books for them. Today was emotional. And they say a picture's worth a thousand words. So I was like, I want to go somewhere where I can get behind some bars, where I can feel captive, where I can portray that. And as people who are free, we're just not used to captivity at all. And I mean, it's easy to be judgmental. It's like, well, they did something or whatever. But I mean, didn't we all do something? And what's the Lord's heart about it? Hebrews 13, three says, remember those who are in prison as if you're in prison with them as if we couldn't get out of these bars, as if we were dependent on somebody else to bring us help and to bring us hope. In Psalm 69 it says, the Lord hears the needy and he does not despise his people who are prisoners. He loves them as much as he loves us. He's worried about them as much as he's worried about us. So what do we do? How do we reach them with the love, the hope, and the healing of Christ? How do we change their life? How do we change their eternity? How do we get in prison, as Jesus said, be as if you're in prison with them? How do we get in prison with them? The way I know to do it is a book. What if we sent 10,000 high God books and put them with them in prison? Hola dias una cosa más. Hola dias soy otra vez. What if the people who can't provide for themselves, we went and we provided for them when we gave them the word and we gave them hope and we gave them a future. We gave them Jesus. I mean, doesn't that fulfill the Great Commission? Go ye into all the world and not just where it's glamorous, but where it's dark and needed and shine a light, be the light. And I believe God's talking to a lot of people today to help us do this. How are we gonna send 10,000 books into Colombia, into Cuba? I know how we're gonna send 10,000 books. We're gonna partner together. It's gonna take $3 and some change per book to send them into the prisons. But isn't a life change worth three bucks? <laughs> Aren't you glad somebody invested more than $3 in your life change? I believe there's some people who are called to say, I want to help all of Cuba. Give me Cuba. Give me Colombia. Give me Argentina. Give me Peru. I believe there's some people who can send them to the nations. So how do we help? You go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash donate. How many books can you send? How many $3 can you spare per life? How many lives can you change? I believe a lot of us are called to change 50 lives, 20 lives, 100 lives. Some of us, a thousand. But you know what? God is in heaven and he is pleased because in Matthew 25, he wrote, when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was naked, you put something on me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When, you, when I was in prison, you were with me. And they were like, Lord, when were you all those things? He said, when you did that for the least of these, you've done it unto me. You wouldn't leave Jesus behind these bars. I know you wouldn't leave Jesus stuck here. You wouldn't leave Jesus stuck here. You would help him. So today, Let's help together. Let me pray for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for each and every one of my friends right now who are listening. That as you're moving on their heart with your generous spirit, because you are a giving God, that we hear God and we obey because obedience is the blessing exchange. And as we obey to reach your people, you open up doors of opportunity that would have never been opened before. So God, as we obey, as you open those doors of opportunity, God, I pray that you bless them as they step into the thing that you have for them next. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You, when you were there, you were ministered to one of one of the worst killer, woman's killer. <laughs> <laughs> and she hugs you, so. <laughs> so, so. I'm glad I didn't know that at the yeah. time. And there's no shank in my back, so this is good news. Yeah, and yeah, they're so, so hard because what happened is, is a generational things going on. Uh, yeah. 
like I say, it's a poverty city, mm -hmm. and people find a way to gain money for that. So many of the parents or the uncles or somebody close to the family allow the little kids to, yeah. they sell the kids. Yeah. That's, the, that's another other way to put it, yeah. So the woman that I hugged, like I didn't know who she was, I didn't know what she'd done. You said she's one of the worst killers in Colombia. Thanks for not telling me. Um, but when I was there, mm -hmm. you didn't feel that spirit. I did not feel, in, in all of the women, I didn't feel a spirit of resistance or anger or hate. I felt people who needed to be loved. Exactly. We have been doing for 13 years this. Yeah. And what happened when they get out of the, of the prison, they start going to a church. Mm. And they're really the, the gospel really changed life. Mm. The poverty of love changed life. Mm. And I have three people, three ladies from the prison who spent like five, seven years in prison. And they start and, uh, going to a church and now they're leaders. Wow. They're leaders in the community and they're the ones who are helping us going back to the prison. Now, during the pandemic, they moved the prison. Guess what? Guess where? <laughs> <laughs> in front of a church. It's right there. Right there. Oh, in it, front of the church. So it's just one of the things you think, God, thank you. Mm. Thank you. And thank you for being there because I have, we couldn't invite so many people over there because of the security reason during the pandemic they weren't allow anybody to go in. But when you were there, mm -hmm. the grace of God was walk, walking with you, mm -hmm. we allowed to enter. Yeah. And one of the best meetings I ever had is with you on the prison. Mm -hmm. The way you preach, the way you see the hunger, it's just unbelievable. And I thank you for your life. Thank you for mm -hmm. your testimony. Thank you for being bold mm -hmm. to speak to those uh, they, they, they didn't want you to get out to, to live. <laughs> yeah. Probably we're, not, we're gonna end up in prison for more days if, if they wanted to, but uh, it was amazing time. I cry a lot. I, I never hug so many uh, people in just such a humble way like that, yeah. that afternoon. Thank you. I was excited to go into a place where somebody's life did not have a lot of hope and if I'm excited about meeting somebody I don't know, I didn't know was a killer, I didn't care that they were a killer, and I was ready to hug them and love them, I can't imagine what God thinks of the people in the prison. This is what I know. God in heaven makes no accidents. Actually, the word coincidence doesn't even exist. Back when the Bible was written, there was no word coincidence in the Hebrew or the Greek. It, it doesn't exist because God is intentional. And what I think is that he saw you. And you might not be in four walls where I can't take a, a phone. He, you might not be in four walls where we couldn't, we, it was very restrictive what we could bring in. But he sees you hurting. He sees your need. He sees that you need a light and you need a way out. And this is what they're doing in, in the prisons in Colombia. That's what I'm hoping to do more of. We're right now working on printing 5,000 books in Spanish in the country of Colombia so that we can take them to the prisons, so we can give them to the prisoners so they have something when we leave that they can go and read. I'm looking so forward to going back and doing a revival in the prison where we can go and not just the women's prison this time, but the men's prison. And y'all pray for me because like the shanks will not make it out into this meeting in Jesus name that everybody will be moved with that spirit. And y'all, if I could have had you with me, when, when the women who hugged me, I felt their love. I felt their thankfulness. I felt the change happening on the inside of them. And I believe that's happening in you right now. And you might be thinking, I've never been prayed for. I don't know what it feels like to be prayed for. I'm just gonna ask you to just pause for a minute. Just like if you're doing the dishes or cleaning the house or you know working on your car, whatever you're doing right now, I'm gonna ask you to just pause for a minute and just stand still and know that God in heaven is listening to this on your behalf. Pastor Miguel is gonna pray with you in just a minute. Before we do that, I wanna share something with you. What kind of people go to prison? Well, I don't know, in the Bible, Paul went to prison. Silas was with Paul in prison. Samson went to prison, Jeremiah went to prison. Joseph went to prison. Huh. What's crazy is I guess God can use people who've been in prison. 
But first, somebody's got to reach them. Somebody's got to tell them about Jesus. Somebody's got to help them. And I guess that somebody could be me and you. You and I could be moved with compassion to reach the people in the prisons, the literal prisons, the mental prisons, the emotional prisons. You know, I want to go face to face with these people like I've gotten to do. I want to hug them. I want to love them. I want to show them the love of Jesus. And I, I think you do too. And you know what? While we're there, let's resource them. Let's give them devotionals, books, guides through the word of God that let them know that God is alive. God is in them and God can forgive their past and they can still have a bright future when they serve him. I can't do all this by myself. I need your help. So I'm wondering if you would maybe help me because I get my favorite letters, my very favorite letters, you guys, are the letters I get from prison, the ones that tear me up. You can ask the people in my office when I open the letters from prison and if there's a $5 bill in there, y'all, I lose it. I have no idea how much $5 is in prison, but in my mind, it's 500 or 5,000. And they write a letter, your show in prison has changed my life. I, I can think of a letter from Brian right now. He said, I wasn't following God. I started watching your show in prison and it made me know that God could love somebody like me. Guys, those words, they ring in my heart that God could love somebody like you. He didn't just love somebody like you, somebody like Brian, somebody like the people in prison. He sent Jesus to die for just you, for just them. So I'm asking, will you help me reach the people in prison? It's super easy. You can go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash donate, or you can text us at 833-245-6190. Just put in the keyword, Nicole Crank is all one word, and you're giving today, it's gonna go to help us reach people in prisons. And then I just have to say thank you to my circle of friends. Those are my people who partner with me for $27.77 a month. And I do one or two Zoom calls a month with them. I send them a weekly email. I send them free resources once or twice a year because I value your partnership to reach people. Pastor Miguel is gonna pray for you. And I believe that God's gonna touch your life. Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for everybody who's suffering for depression, anxiety, panic attack, who seems to be in a dark tunnel, open the door for them. Visit them with the Holy Spirit right now. Wherever you are, He knows the way out. He knows how to get you out. And you can see a bright morning again. You can enjoy life again. You can be happy again. You can smile again. Just walk with Jesus. So right now, in the name of Jesus, be free. Yeah, be, be free. free for that feeling. Be free. Amen and amen.